Uh, Professor, good morning and thanks so much for being with us. You know, we've heard that, oh look, we're seeing a spike in cases because we're testing more. Isn't that just part of it? And are, are we really in another crisis right now? That's right, Alexis. We are into month six of this pandemic and counting. At this point in time, we should be on the other side of this crisis. And so many other countries in the world have done that and achieved uh, that outcome, but we have not here in the United States. And a large reason for that is because we still don't have a national coordinated strategy to tackle this pandemic. We have 50 states going in 50 different directions. And as a result, we are seeing these record rises that you just mentioned, and it's very alarming and very disturbing, especially at this point in time. So we need to maximize our public health interventions right now because we don't have a cure yet, even though there have been advances in treatment. We don't have a vaccine yet, even though there's tremendous activity on that front. What we have is prevention and public health, and we need to maximize that now more than ever. Doctor, uh, what I'm not hearing uh, from lawmakers, everybody wants another fiscal stimulus. They want more checks going in the hands of consumers. They want unemployment uh, top up to be extended. But what about health care? Uh, should there be some stimulus uh, directly driven right through the health care system? Great question, Brian. So some money has come down to hospitals and physicians, and that's important. But just as important is that we have a public health infrastructure that's been really decimated over the last several decades. Uh, we are seeing this pandemic because it's been fueled by a slower pandemic of chronic illness that makes people at high risk. And we have not had the emphasis on disease prevention in our society that we all need and deserve. So if one outcome of this crisis, once we get behind us, is a strong investment in public health infrastructure, uh, that's going to be a very important outcome. And we need to track that carefully, especially as the fall is coming. We are very fearful of a second wave. We have flu season uh, on the horizon as well. So we need public health strength now more than ever. Doctor, on that point, Slangeli here, uh, public health is one of those key tools combined with uh, contact tracing and the availability of testing as well. So that whole picture is also of concern still. We've seen, uh, you know, in New York where they have tried to start doing contact tracing and there are some privacy concerns and people not really being cooperative. So all of this is still hampering uh, what should be uh, the, the strategy right now. Where do we go from here if all of this is, like you said, 50 different states going in 50 different directions? That's right, Angela. So uh, we, we need national coordination and a national strategy right now. For example, uh, I believe we need a national policy for wearing masks right now. Uh, until the, the present time, we've had, again, states going in different directions, and there's a lot of public confusion on masks. In my view, we should level the playing field, make it consistent across the country, and study after study is now showing the efficacy of masks, that it decreases transmission. And one study has actually pro projected that if 95% of Americans wore masks, we would save some 30,000 lives by October 1st. So this is the life-saving tool that we have at hand. We haven't maximized it yet. We have to do that as a country. We need a national plan in the midst of this national crisis. We need a united plan for the United States. And looking at the national plan, one of the things is that focus on how to reopen safely and, and what the, uh, the the sort of programs that are being used, all these major lab companies are offering uh, temperature checks and uh, antibody tests, but we, we're still looking at antibody tests as being less accurate, but they're still being used. Are there concerns right now about how businesses should go about looking at these solutions? So that's a great question too. So this is a time where public health and private business need to work hand in hand. In fact, in the business crisis that we're all enduring right now, we, we can't solve that unless we solve the health crisis first. So as businesses want to fully reopen, as people want to go back to work, uh, we need to work through the testing criteria and strategy by business, particularly focus on high risk communities like communities of color that have really suffered disproportionately through this pandemic. Uh, we need to have health experts and business experts work side by side with respect to social distancing at work and hand hygiene and decreasing 
the number of people in a building at any time. Uh, these are all policies that we could coordinate better if we had stronger national coordination. And we, we need to stress that as we move into the fall with a second wave possibly coming in the seasonal flu as well. Dr. Koh, as we see more and more states now rolling back some of their uh, restrictions, do you foresee the country having to lock down perhaps even in a more aggressive way than we did back in March? Well, that's a uh, important question, Alexis, and I, and I wish we didn't have to even confront that possibility right now. But back in uh, the early spring, when, when the White House put forward the framework for reopening, it was stressed that reopening should happen in the backdrop of decreasing transmission. And many states didn't do that, unfortunately. And that's why we're seeing the great rises in cases since Memorial Day. So we need to track these numbers carefully. We need to track these outcomes carefully. I know governors across the country are doing that, but particularly, for example, the governor in California. Uh, I'm sure he's not happy to recommend stay-at-home orders again, but the crisis is dictating that. So tracking those trends, tracking the data, and, and following those very closely uh, is the only way to dictate policy going forward. All right, Dr. Howard Coe, uh, Professor of Public Health at Harvard University, thanks so much for your insights this morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.